Good morning. It's November 8, 2012. My name is Dave Ellis, and the purpose of our being together is to talk about uh, ways to assist students to develop more professionalism. I'm going to uh, put the purpose of our time up on your screen. Most of you uh, can see this screen, and I just want to remind you that I'm here really to assist you to discover and invent and incorporate ways to promote classroom civility and professionalism. Civility, that's a great word. Professionalism, while assisting students in defining their values and aligning their actions with those values. I really do believe that students can develop master student qualities and become inquisitive and focused, energetic, responsible, way more than that, self-directed, creative. So the reason that we're here today for this hour, whether you're listening to the recording, whether you're watching this on your screen or just hearing it, my purpose is to assist you to discover, invent, and incorporate ways to promote classroom civility and professionalism while assisting students in defining their values and aligning their actions. That's what I'm here for, and I really am glad to see that uh, there are several more of you here. Some of you have just called in, and you're not observing this on your screen. I'll, uh, I'll note that and uh, make certain that I don't just display my ideas and your ideas, but I also listen to you. I'm going to start by uh, just welcome you, welcoming you, Eileen and, uh, and Eleanor and Jewel and Karen and Lorna and Margaret and Tina and several others some of whom I don't know uh, the names of because you're just calling in and you haven't uh, connected by your computer. A few of you I notice, uh, like Margaret and Jewel, uh, it looks like uh, you are just joining me on the computer and you do not have the audio. It could be that you're one of the call-in users. So um, really glad to have you here and glad to have the people who are listening. What I'm going to do is first of all just start by uh, uh, unmuting you all, and uh, the reason I'm going to do this is because I want to hear from a few of you and also check your background noise. Now, I've given you the purpose of today, but I want to stop and just make sure that we're all connected. So uh, if you have a question, you can either just say your name and I'll call on you, or you can raise your hand if you're on the computer. Your uh, computer hand raising ability is right down below the participant panel. I noticed that several of you have found that because uh, you've uh, indicated either with a question mark that you want to speak or that you've uh, had a little few smiley faces. But I want to start with you, Karen, because I see you've uh, uh, indicated a question, so uh, you've got the floor. Good morning, Dave. It's a wonderful thing to hear your voice again. I first attended a seminar you presented in 97, I think. <laughs> so I'm ecstatic, and I've gotten one of my colleagues to sign in today too, I believe. I can't tell because I don't see the list of everyone attending, but um, I'm eager to hear more about uh, these master student qualities because I have integrated them into every class I teach. Oh, that's so wonderful. thanks for your work over the years and your receptivity to the work that got you launched. Thanks a lot, Karen. I appreciate that. It's been a wonderful career. I started in 1979 working with students to assist them to be more successful in school. So uh, that's where we're headed, and I really appreciate that. If you want to uh, make a comment, please uh, either raise your hand or I'll just stop talking now, and you can uh, say your name, and, and you've got the floor. Well, it's Karen again, and I just wondered where my screen went. I saw initially your desktop, but now it's not there. Yeah, that's because I uh, stopped sharing my desktop. Oh, and, uh, okay. That's now what I've done is I put it back on because, Karen, part of what I want to remind everybody, because a few people just arrived late, and I'm going to hear from them in a moment, but the reason that we're together, the purpose of this session is for you to discover and uh, really invent ways that you can be more successful in school. That's, uh, that's my job my job to assist you to do that. And um, it's up on the screen, and um, 
as I mentioned, I introduced myself a minute ago, and uh, there's a little picture of me. In uh, 1979, I started a course for students, and then I began teaching faculty around the United States and, and Canada. Since then, over 5 million people have used becoming a master student and gone through a course. And uh, I've also written seven other books. And so there's a little bit about me professionally, but I do want to just take a second to uh, tell you that I'm a proud grandfather, and here are three of my grandchildren. Uh, I also want to introduce my coworker, Bill Rents. Bill's going to be uh, is joining us, and uh, um, he assists me to make sure that uh, what I'm presenting to you is on track. And if things aren't going well technically, he'll let me know. But um, I noticed a couple more people have joined the call. I've taken you all off of mute for now. If you want to uh, speak, I'll pause now. Just say your name, and uh, you can offer uh, either a question or a comment about where we're headed with this webinar. Hi, my name is Diane Rhodes. I don't know if you can hear me, but I tried to get on. I was signed up for the webinar and, and tried repeatedly on the computer. And it, uh, from 10 till 10 on, and uh, kept getting that there was a session in progress and I couldn't get on. So that's why I'm on the phone. Well, thanks, Diane, and thanks for your persistence. I'm uh, guessing that you uh, did uh, call my colleague Bill Rents, but uh, if not, that would be one option. Or just another option is uh, to uh, check to see if for some reason there are two uh, WebEx trainings going on your computer, because uh, I notice that most people have been able to get on. But thanks a lot, Diane, for telling me. And I'll, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'll make sure that the people who have joined us only by phone are well connected. Somebody else like to make a comment before I uh, start my formal presentation? Well, welcome. I see a lot of people on the call, and I really appreciate that you are here. You all for now, just because I want to be able to uh, not have that background noise. And uh, again, I appreciate that you're here, and um, letting you know that the reason that I'm here is to assist you to think what you have never thought. That's me live, and uh, now that you know what I look like, I'm not going to spend this screen time. Uh, having you look at my face. Rather, what I want you to look at are a few of my ideas, but mostly most of your ideas. Uh, here is my job with you today, which is to help you think new thoughts, primarily new thoughts about how to promote classroom civility, student professionalism, how to incorporate values and value clarification into the classroom if that's something that you want, how to assist students to define their own values and align their actions with those values. My job in the classroom, and I think your job in the classroom, and my job today is to assist you not only to think what you've never thought, but to write what you've never written. I'm going to give you time on this call to write, to think, because I believe that your words and your thoughts are way more important than mine. I believe that also when we're interacting with students in a classroom. I'll also break you into small groups today so that you can say what you've never said, really so that we can all start to take actions that we've never taken. We can do what we've never done, and we can create a life that we've never had. That's my purpose, and that's what I believe that we can do in a student success course. So I'm going to jump right into what we're here to do. And that is to look at, first of all, what can we do to assist students to define their own values? I've got an idea about that, I've got an idea about what we can do. And then I want to hear your ideas. Because as I said, my job is to assist you to think, just like my job in the classroom is to assist students to think. In particular, my job is to assist them to think about values and about what they can do to get clear about what their own values are. And the way I do that, and the reason that I do that, is so that they can align their actions with their fundamental attitudes, with their purpose, with what's most important to them. 
one way to do this, and I'm going to ask you for a lot of other ways in a few minutes, but one way to do this is to ask them, what do you want? And of course, when we ask students what they want, we often hear, I don't know, or I don't care, or I'm not sure. I believe that if we persist, we can assist them to go beyond, I don't know, I don't care, I'm not sure. And in particular, we can ask them what they want, not only and when, and where, and with whom. And by asking this question, I believe that we assist them to clarify their own values. In the beginning, I recommend that you postpone asking them how, because I think it drives them into resignation. I don't believe that we really know the proper steps or the how to accomplish our most important goals our purpose. And why sometimes gets people to question their direction. Well, in terms of values, here's the question that I'm recommending. Who do you want to be? So that you have some time in, in many of your classes to ask students who do they want to be? What are their attitudes that they want to manifest? What are the values that they want to bring to day to day? Now, of course, we'll sometimes ask them, what do they want to do? They're asked that more often. And we'll even can ask students, what do they want to have? But today, our focus is on values, on purpose, on attitudes. And in that regard, we're putting our attention on being. Because we are human beings. We're not human doings. We're not human havings. We're human beings. We're beings who get to focus on our purpose, our attitudes, and our values. Yes, sometimes we'll put our attention on actions, on activities, on projects, and sometimes even on what we have, on the results, on the circumstances of life. But primarily, what I'm recommending is we get students to focus on who they want to be. Well, that's one of my ideas. But as I mentioned, I'm really here to get your ideas. So I'm going to stop talking so you can start thinking and writing. And I'm literally going to start stop talking for a minute and 10 seconds, which is actually quite a bit of time. And my purpose during this minute and 10 seconds is for you to write, for you to write what you might do to assist students in the classroom to clarify their values, to assist students in the classroom to begin to align their actions with their values. That's, that's, what, uh, that's what we're here to do. I'll be quiet for a minute and 10 seconds while you write about what you could do in the classroom to assist students to clarify their values and align their actions. And I'll take some of your ideas. I'll be quiet now for a minute and 10 seconds. Please write. In a minute, I'm going to hear some of your ideas. But first of all, I want to find out uh, who you are and uh, what your work is. Uh, of course, I have your names, and I recognize a few of them. But I've just put a poll up on your screen for those of you who are uh, connected by the computer. I know some of you are just on the phone, and some of you are listening to the recording. But even those of you who are on the phone or listening to the recording, I'm curious. You could send me an email at dave at daveellisleadership.com. Dave at daveellisleadership.com. 
www.ChristianMedia.com. What I'd like to know is what's your role uh, or your position? And you can choose more than one. Uh, I want to know A, if you're a faculty, uh, B, if you're a course coordinator, C, if you're primarily an administrator, or D, if you have some other role. I know that a few of you are not in the classroom, and a few of you are actually observing and not uh, directly involved with student success courses. I'd like to know primarily who I'm speaking to, and I'd like you all to know who's listening. So uh, there we go. We've got most of the people who are going to vote who have voted, and uh, about half of you, uh, about 60% of you are faculty. Um, there's uh, one course coordinator on the phone and a couple of administrators. So uh, uh, we'll leave this poll open for just a few more seconds uh, so that you can vote. I'm really curious, interested to know who's on the call. I'm also, by the way, here to demonstrate by polling you like this um, one way to get students more involved in the classroom, which is to ask them questions. So I've got one more question, and that is, uh, do you use becoming a master student? And the first answer is yes, and the second answer is no, you use a different book in your student success course. Or C is no, you, ha you have a course, but you don't use a book. Or D is you're considering becoming a master using becoming a master student. Or E, it's just not even applicable to your role. So uh, once again, I'm curious who I'm speaking to, and I see here that uh, about 15% uh, of you use Becoming a Master Student, 30% of you use a different book, um, a couple of you are considering shifting that book, and um, thank you. do want to assure you that although we're going to talk today about master student qualities, my job is not to talk to you about the book. My job is to help you think. So in the spirit of that, I gave you some time to write, and I'd like to hear. So uh, you can either raise your hand with that little uh, hand on the lower part of the instrument panel, uh, the participant panel, or because there's several of you who are on the phone only, I'm going to unmute all of you who are only on the telephone. And you can just raise your hand by saying your name, because what I'd like to do is hear from you. And what I'm asking to hear is, how could you help students align their, uh, discover their own values and then align their actions? All right, time to hear from you. And Roseanne, uh, I noticed you raised your hand, but uh, you are not connected on the phone as uh, connected to your name, but you, maybe you're a call-in user. So Roseanne, please just uh, go ahead. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, okay, great. Um, a few questions that I would ask are, what's important to you? Um, tell me about what you are proud of. So having a student share some accomplishment and then extrapol extrapolating what their values are. Yes. Um, or asking who do you admire, and again, talking about the qualities of that, that person and why it's important to them. Yeah. So who do you admire, and what in particular do you admire about that person? Mm -hmm. and, uh, so just really asking students. Thanks a lot, Roseanne. I'd like to hear from somebody else. Just go ahead and say your name if you're a call-in user. Uh, if not, you can also raise your hand like Karen just did. Go ahead, Karen. Um, well, I wrote that to assist students to clarify who they want to be, I can ask myself the question, then see how close I am to being that, and where I can learn more about ways to get closer to where and who I want to be. There's something that I use called five times why with students to develop a thesis, but I could actually also use it myself. It's a free writing tool where I ask myself, why about the same question five times? Excellent, Karen. I really like this. And then you've got two uh, ideas that I'm hearing. One is this, this uh, constantly asking students why and, which, uh, and asking yourself so that you model uh, and first of all use this technique with yourself and then bring it into the classroom. Yes. Yeah. That's why I believe that it's so uh, professionally beneficial to teach a course like this. 
because what happens is that we actually get to practice what we teach. Now, just in case some of you haven't been able to uh, locate the uh, raise hand button, and um, you might have a little bit of feedback, so uh, if so, I'll put you back on you. But for now, I'd like to just uh, let any of you who would like to speak about how you could assist students to discover their values, go ahead and say your name. Anyone uh, want to speak? You know, Dave, don't you just hate it when people just sit here and act dumb? <laughs> well, actually, I don't. But my uh, students do that to me. <laughs> I have. Um, I teach. This is Andy. Oh, hi, Andy. I teach in uh, at the LCO uh, Community College, which is a tribal um, education unit. Uh huh. And um, about two thirds of my students are Native American, so we have a lot of questions about uh, in the classroom about culture and what does your culture mean to you. Yes. And I find that many of them um, have never taken the time to clarify what those values are. Yeah. And so they just sit there and they look at me and they go, "What?" So we have a lot of conversations about what is important to us as a student or what we're proud of or, or people that we admire. Sometimes I have to actually throw them up. Yeah. Thanks, Sandy. I appreciate that. I think that you're right. And, uh, and I believe that sometimes with different cultures and just with different groups, what's required is time. It just takes time to let people really process the question. Yeah. I'd like to hear from one more of you before I give you all time once again. Oh, hi, Dave. Can you hear me? I can. Who is that? Oh, great. This is, this is Lorna. And um, I teach in East L.A. where a number of the students have unique experiences. And um, I think it probably would help if we go over some of the daily things that happen in their neighborhoods and find out how it is that they should deal with it, or for some of them, how do they deal with it? Yeah. Because they do have unique challenges. Yeah. Is that how do students deal with unique challenge? How, how, how should they, and maybe for some of them, how do they? Yeah, that's good. I really like that distinction between how are they dealing with them now? What are the actions that they're using? And then what are their values? And what actions could come from those values? Yeah. Thank you. Now what I'm going to do is put you all on mute just so that um, you don't hear that crosstalk until we get into groups in a moment. In a few minutes, we're going to break into small groups, and I'm going to have you speak to each other. That's the beauty of this uh, WebEx training center. It allows me to break those of you who uh, are on the computer into small groups, and I'm going to do that. But first of all, I want to ask that you each write before you speak. And I think that this is something we can constantly ask students to do, is first of all, write. And what I'm asking you to write is what are you learning about yourself right now? What are you learning about yourself? It's a, it's a discovery statement. If you write, I discovered that I, so today on this call so far, we've been together 25 minutes, what are you discovering about yourself? So the first part is I discovered that I, and then the second part is I intend to. So first of all, you're doing some self discovery, and then some self-reflection. Those of you who are on the screen, you uh, see the idea here. And the idea is that you ask students to examine what it is that they're discovering about themselves, and then what do they intend to do differently. The purpose here is to slow their mind down. The discovery statement can also take the form of I learned that I, or I rediscover or relearn that I. The intention statement can also take the form of I promise to or my goal is to. 
this is one way that I think we can help students really uncover their own values and align their actions by asking them to continually self-reflect and self-direct. I'm going to be quiet now for another minute and 10 seconds so that you can do what I'm asking students to do. Write down, what are you discovering about yourself in our time together, and what do you intend to do differently? I'll give you 10 seconds now. Begin. All right. Appreciate you taking the time to think. Now, in uh, in about a minute or less, you're going to be in a small group of other uh, participants. Those of you who are joined by the computer, and I know a few of you aren't joined by the computer. Those of you who aren't on the computer, you're going to be in the main room, and you'll still be able to speak with each other. All of you. And uh, those of you who are in the main room, uh, just jump in and say who's here. Those of you who are in the breakout sessions, please uh, do the same. And what I'd like you to do is share your discovery, your self-discovery, and your self-direction. Uh, self uh, these breakout groups are going to be about four minutes long. You're notified on your computer when you're coming back into groups. All right, there we're back done with that uh, breakout session for now. I noticed that a, a few of you uh, had difficulty. I apologize for that. I think the reason is that uh, a couple of people had joined by the computer uh, on the visual portion but had called in uh, for the auditory. So when they were put into small groups, they weren't able to speak. Uh, next time I break people in groups, I'll notice that. But uh, I. Uh, heard uh, several of you talking about what you're discovering about yourself and what you intend to do differently. And that, to me, is the purpose of this call. And it is the purpose that we can bring to our classrooms. We can ask students to self-discover and self-direct. Now I'd like to uh, go to one other topic that we uh, mentioned uh, regarding today, and that's classroom civility. I've got a few of my ideas about what we can do to have students uh, behave in a more professional way in the classroom. I'll, I'll put those up on the screen and I'll talk them through for those of you who have just joined by phone. Then I'm going to, before I present all of my ideas, I'm going to pause in, in the middle and once again give you a chance to think about what you could do in a classroom to really up-level the master students, up-level the quality of, of professionalism, and sometimes what we call classroom civility. My first idea is to let students know that the way they operate in the classroom is developing a habit for how they'll operate in the workplace. I used to joke with students about how sometimes they would come in and ask me how many cuts they would get, and I, uh, how many times they could just leave the class and, uh, with, for no reason and, and skip. Uh, and I would laugh and I would say, well, what would uh, an employer respond to that? I think you would probably not have a job. And what we're doing in the class and in college is preparing you for the workplace. So the way in which you behave in this classroom begins to develop the processes that you'll use in the workplace. Another technique that I use to promote professionalism in class is to clearly define it for me to take the time to write down exactly what I want. 
the kind of behaviors that I want. For example, I want no texting. I want no side conversations. I want no computer use that's not linked to what's going on in the class. Um, I want students to participate actively. And then I ask students to define what they think classroom civility is. Once we get my definition and their definition, then I ask them, I ask very proudly for them to commit to it. And I ask those commitments in writing. For about 30 years, I've used three-part paper to do this, where I make a list of all the uh, uh, behaviors that I want to see in the classroom that I might define as civil behaviors or professional student behaviors, and then ask students to commit to those behaviors or not. So I give them the, uh, the freedom to say no. Now, most of them will say yes, but they've got that freedom. And then I assign accountability partners. In other words, I ask them, all right, uh, if you are committed to behaving in this way, then partner up with someone else in the class who will assist you to keep your agreement. Well, those are my ideas, but again, my job here is to get your thinking and your ideas. So uh, the question is, what could you do in the classroom to promote civility, to promote professionalism? Like before, I'm going to be quiet for a minute and 10 seconds while you write, and then I'll hear some of your ideas. Please start to write now. Question. What can you do to promote civility in the classroom? Please begin writing. Thank you. I'm going to start, uh, and I'd like to hear from you. Uh, there's a little background noise, um, so I'm going to mute those few of you who have some background noise. But other than that, I'd like to hear from you, so please raise your hand or just say your name, because if you're on the phone only, I can't see your hand. I'd like to hear from you. What would you do in the classroom? What are your ideas? Would you say again how we raise our hand? Well, if you're on the computer, there's a little uh, a picture of a hand right below the list of uh, uh, participants. On your right hand, the, your screen is divided into two pieces. And oh, the right hand piece, there you go. Lots of people just saw where that hand was. And Andy, we'll start with you. Um, I, when I come into the classroom, I kind of shock them right off the bat by telling them that this is my role, this is where I'm coming from, this is what I want to teach you, and this is your role. And then I tell them that um, their grade is going to impact their future and, and that I expect them to decide to desire the highest possible grade. And then I ask them right away to write on that, what I just said, how do you feel about that? And I get really crazy answers. <laughs> really good, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> so in other words, you're outlining clearly what you want in the classroom. Yes, and I tell them what I'm going to give them. Yeah. yeah. So it's not only what they can, you want to expect from them, but what they can expect from you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And actually, I make I actually make them help me in in the syllabus. Um, 
we make a lot of adjustments throughout the semester based on their desires and how that coincides with mine. Yeah. You know, that kind of responsiveness, I think, is another way that we can demonstrate that we are not only listening, but we are manifesting the value of contributing to them because of their input. Thanks, Andy. I'm going to put you on mute because there is some background noise. And uh, uh, go ahead, Karen. Well, Hi. I, oh, we got two Karens. Go ahead, Karen. Go ahead. I was just going to say something that didn't work for me, even though it sounded like a wonderful idea to conference. And that was I opened the door to allow the students to help me make some rules which I thought would give them more ownership. And it did work to a certain extent, but when it came to the cell phone issue, they assured me that they could text and use their cell phones and still pay attention. And so I thought, all right, if you really feel that way, I will allow that, even though it is not my um, culture, being a little bit older. But I found that it drove me absolutely crazy. Um, I didn't get the attention that I was expecting in the first place, and in the second place, I found that it was a personal problem for me that I had to bring to the class and say, this is really uh, destroying this experience for me. So I was wondering if we could uh, change that rule. Thank you, Karen. I, I really like, first of all, the self-disclosure, saying what is it that can work for me and what can't, because one of the... Uh, uh, one of the commitments I ask from students is to not have side conversations, not to be speaking to each other either while some other student is speaking or while I'm speaking. Uh, the only time that they speak to each other is during exercises. Now, maybe that's just my idiosyncrasy, but I ask for it. And not every student says that they'll commit to it, but after I make a case for it, most students do commit to it. And then most of the students who commit to it behave consistent with their commitment. So uh, I really like what you're, what you're suggesting here, which is that self-disclosure, and then just saying that even though maybe you think you can do it, in my classroom, I don't want that. Thanks, Karen. Now we're going to go uh, first be, uh, to the other Karen, and then we're going to go to Julie. Go ahead, Karen. Okay. I um, ask students, I, I set community guidelines in the syllabus. And I have them um, email me by the end of the first week with the completion of the sentence in addition to following or adhering to the community guidelines to give and receive the most in this class, I blank. Uh -huh. And so, you know, that works for the students who read the syllabus. <laughs> yeah. So um, what I'm going to do, because... The second half of the semester, all my classes are purely online. I'm going to actually use the discussion area to refer to the community guidelines in the syllabus and then have them pair up with accountability partners that seem to match their level of commitment. Yeah. So, Good job, Karen. You are my inspiration, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy to be your inspiration, particularly for your new thinking, because that's what's occurring here. Julie, we're going to go to you, and then I'll give a few more of my ideas. Julie, you had raised your hand, and I, uh, you're off a of mute. Uh, Julie Del Medico. Not wanting to speak now. Can't hear you anyway. You might be speaking, but you're... Uh, your own computer might be muted. Well, thanks for raising your hand. Anybody else who'd like to speak, just say your first name, and we'll get your idea, and then I'll go on and give you a few more of mine. My name is Diane, and there's something that it bothers me that nobody has mentioned. Speak, and Diane. That is, that, that is, for classroom civility, you model it. Yes. Treat them with respect and courtesy. Yes. Thank you, Diane. It's my best idea, it's, and I'm glad you mentioned it, because I think that it's the way that we can really make a difference with students, which is to model it. And uh, I've got a few more ideas, and that is that uh, we embrace the view that we actually train people how to treat us. 
Now, I know that uh, some of you don't believe this, but just as a possibility that maybe we actually teach students how to treat us. And, um, and if that's true, then one way we can teach them is to pay more attention and appreciate more the behaviors that we want. So just like in any relationship, if you want more of this behavior, you pay attention to it and you appreciate it. You pay attention and give more focus and attention to the students who are behaving in that way. Now you can also decrease it. And then one way to decrease the disruptive behavior is through private feedback and private requesting. That is, you uh, ask the student to stay for a bit after class or before class and you just say, I noticed this and you give them feedback about what you see, and I ask that you not do that. Now that often works. Sometimes it doesn't. So you turn up the heat with public feedback and public requests. And that is to say, you and I have talked about this before, and I noticed that you're still having a side conversation. I noticed you're still on your telephone, and I ask that you not do that during class, or whatever the behavior is. And then, once in a while, not often, either a private or a public dismissal. I've only had to do this a half a dozen times in my career, but the word gets out. And once I ask students to leave a class, either privately or sometimes rarely, but once in a while publicly, the word gets out. And that's one way that we can train students how to behave in class. Now, it's, of course, the most drastic way. I really want to return to what we just heard a minute ago, which is to model so that when we act professional, when we act in a civil way, it's way more likely that students will do the same. Well, I want to um, now uh, do what we did earlier, which is talk about what are you going to do differently? What can you do to behave differently in class? What are you discovering about yourself with this particular conversation? I'm going to give you one more minute to write, and then I'm going to break you into groups again. I've rearranged the group, so I think that uh, all of you can hear each other this time. And uh, you'll all have somebody in the group that's, uh, that's got a connection. And we'll, uh, but before we break into those groups, I want you to write. So with regard to classroom civility and professionalism, what are you learning about yourself and what do you intend to do differently? Please take a minute and 10 seconds and self-reflect, self-direct right now. So uh, uh, those people who are just connected by phone, you'll uh, still be able to talk with each other. And, and your goal for all of you uh, is when you get into your groups, share what you're discovering about yourself by reading one of your intentions and what you intend to do differently. And, um, and then make sure that everybody in the group gets to speak. If you're having problems, just uh, indicate so, and I'll come into your group. So. Uh, Thanks for uh, not only writing what maybe you've never written, but beginning to speak what you've never spoken. And uh, groups are going to ch uh, end in just a moment. Thank you for participating.
Thanks for uh, sharing what your self-discoveries are and also your self-direction. As I mentioned, my job is to, whether in the classroom or whether we're meeting together, my job is to see what I can do to get everybody to uh, think new thoughts and uh, take new actions. That's really, as a, as a facilitator, my job. As a classroom instructor, that's my job. And to introduce people to the qualities that I'm really interested in promoting. And I'm going to very quickly uh, let you all know that you can uh, find these master student qualities in the book, Becoming a Master Student. But I, uh, those of you who are on the screen, I want to quickly go through them. And those of you who are just joining me by telephone or by audio recording, remind you that uh, we're really wanting students to be inquisitive and focused and willing to change. We're wanting students to be more joyful and able to suspend judgment and energetic. These qualities are all defined in Becoming a Master Student. And I know most of you don't use that book. But you can sample that book, and you can read more about how we're asking students to be self-aware and really self-responsible, willing to take risks and participate, willing to accept paradox, and really courageous and self-directed. So these are qualities of spontaneity and being tech-savvy and intuitive that we're asking students to look to see how they could manifest these qualities, or really these are values of being optimistic and willing to be uncomfortable and even willing to laugh and hungry for information, caring students. So we uh, relaxed about their grades. This is part of what we're asking students to do. And um, thank you for being with me today. I've got two more quick polls that I'd like to take before we leave. And uh, because what I'm, what I'm curious about is during this time that we've just had together, have you had new thoughts? So up on your screen is a poll and saying, uh, did you have new thoughts? A is no, you didn't really think anything new. B is you had one or two. C is you had several. And D is uh, you had really some great new thoughts. And you can uh, pick more than one. Uh, and most of you are saying that you had some uh, New thoughts, several new thoughts, and a few of you are even saying they're great new thoughts. What I'm curious about really is your input, and that's why I have uh, asked you to uh, answer that poll. We've got one more poll, and then I'll say goodbye with a preview of what's next. And uh, so uh, first of all is the preview of what's Next, and that is we're next week going to gather one more time in these virtual gatherings. And when the topic is transferring skills to the workplace, really assisting students to be prepared to go from college to their career. Uh, that's what we're going to be focused on next week. And I'm curious if you are returning. So up on your screen is one more poll, and that is uh, are you coming back next week? Uh, a is no, uh, and you think that uh, this is not very valuable, so you think I maybe even should stop it. Uh, B is no, but uh, you think it was valuable, it's just not right for you. C is maybe you'll be back. D is you will be back. And E is a team of wild horses couldn't keep you from returning. And it looks like 40% uh, uh, of you might be back, and 60% of you uh, will be back. So. Uh, that's great. Well, thank you. I know that most of you were able to uh, work with each other in your small group. A few of you weren't. Um, I'll work out those technical problems. Mostly what I want to do at the end of this call is thank you. Thank you for doing what I consider the most important job on Earth, which is to prepare students to become the leaders of our country, and many of them the leaders of our world. It's great to be with you. Hope to hear from you and talk to you again next week. For now, goodbye.